Welcome, my name is George Geary. Those of you that don't know who I am, I've gotten a lot of new followers watching this little uh, cooking show that I'm doing from my kitchen at home. I thought I'd do it for a while. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this. Today I got about six emails from some of you, not little messages, but long emails stating how great you like these things. I had somebody send me their pistachio cake from one of the first ones. Uh, that's Anne Marie up in R Reno. She did the pistachio cake. She even went to my friend's trip three times. So you'd think she would learn French by now, but she doesn't. Uh, she's a sweetheart. And uh, I just, uh, I made a cookbook. I don't think, I have one copy left, but you can find it once in a while. It's a salad dressing book. And I was sick and tired of salad dressings uh, costing so much. So I'm going to go into that. And uh, like I said, some of you don't know who I am. My name's George, and I've got about 14 cookbooks out there. And I teach all over the country. I used to work for the Walt Disney Company. I'm gonna go back further than Walt Disney. I used to work for Marriott Hotels. And I was just like a peon um, banquet chef. And I wanted to uh, do one of the recipes that I used to do there. And uh, we're going to teach you how to do a vinaigrette really good and um, a coleslaw with uh, pesto and um, a, oh, what is this one? The Marriott peppercorn dressing. So let's get going. Washed our hands. I know it's kind of tense out there. We're going on uh, in California where this is our first full week. Uh, just going to the grocery store, gasoline. I still have a full tank after a whole week. That is so rare. And uh, I also, uh, uh, i not too excited about going out. I like to stay in. And you wouldn't think that because I travel so much, but anyway. So our first recipe, and I'm gonna put these all online, Marriott Creamy Peppercorn Dressing. When I worked on the salad dressing book, I knew I wanted this recipe. I loved it when we, uh, I worked at, at, at Marriott. And they used to make humongous tubs of it. And what was interesting is I sent an email or a letter over to the Marriott Corporation, said I worked for them at their Anaheim property. I really want the recipe. They sent my letter to the Anaheim property and they got it, the executive chef. His secretary emailed me and she said, I see you worked for us and we're gonna send you the recipe, but it's for 500 gallons of dressing, which I thought, that's fine. I can." make it go into as small as possible. And then she says, you probably don't remember me, but I went to high school with you. That secretary went to high school with me and she still works for Marriott, Armella. And uh, I took the recipe, cut it down, changed it a little bit to make it work. And uh, after I did that, I was in a used bookstore and I found Marriott Hot Shops, they were called. They were little uh, uh, root beer stands on the East Coast. Marriott started before he did the uh, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, I lost, uh, the hotels. And I found a little cookbook and it had this dressing in it. So this dressing has been forever. The executive chef at Marriott said they don't make it anymore. They buy dressing. It's too hard to make. So they don't make it from scratch, but we will here. The hardest part of this whole recipe is our first, our second ingredient, which is onion juice. All I do is puree onions really, really good and squish it down. You used to be able to buy onion, you know, in the produce department, the lemons, the plastic ones, they had onions like that back in the 60s. Our dryer's done. <laughs> I get an orchestra. So anyway, that's what I do and I tell you how to do it in the recipe. We've got mayonnaise. You can make your own or purchase it. We've got, this is the hardest of all the dressings. If you can make this one, you can do any of them in the whole book, and there's 250 of them. We have uh, an apple cider vinegar, which I'm using Tem Temecula Olive Oil Company, and I'm gonna use them a, a number of times. I'm using their fresh apple California cider. And uh, this is in Temecula, about 30 miles south of me, but they have San Diego, Orange County, and Long Beach locations. And I'll put their website online. We've got some, Peppercorns, we have Worcestershire sauce, trying to say that fast five times with something in your mouth. Tabasco sauce, now Tabasco I thought was fascinating. When I was a kid, we had one bottle our whole life. My dad would use three little drops on every taco and that was it. I didn't know you used it for anything else. 
So we've got a, a fresh bottle of Tabasco and they have Chipotle Tabasco, any of those. You can even use Sriracha if you want. Then we have garlic and Parmesan cheese grated. All we do is we take in a food processor with a metal blade, like I told you the other day, most of you don't use your food processor because you think it's hard, you have to clean it. First, I do the onions to get them all pulverized. Then I take my mayonnaise and everything in it, all of the items here, and put it in to my food processor. And our peppercorns, it's gonna sound like sand pretty much and get fresh peppercorns. Don't just take peppercorns and do it. You want big chunks of peppercorns in this dressing because it adds to the flavor. And then our Parmesan, let me see. I don't remember, okay. We're gonna transfer to a bowl and fold that Parmesan in. We don't put it in now. We want some pieces of Parmesan. And we turn it on. And you kinda hear the sand. Those are the peppercorns. Salad dressing tastes best if you wait a day. So we're gonna turn it off, pulse it, look at it, looks perfect. We're gonna take, scrape the sides, turn it back on, and then we're gonna place it into our bowl. I'm using a bowl that has a pour spout because I put it into a couple jars and throw it in the fridge. So I've got it ready to go. When I uh, first started working up, see, look at that, and it gets thicker too. It's a cross between a ranch and a vinaigrette, just like that. Now, if you wanna clean that, if it's a thicker uh, mixture, you take and you turn it on for a second, turn it off, and then your blade is clean, and you can do the whole inside. The blade isn't perfectly clean. You still have to clean it. But Now, because my next item in the food processor is stronger than this one, I'm not going to wash it. Let's give you another salad dressing. That's the other thing. If you cook with your food processor and you do it in flavor sequential order, you're going to be fine without having to wash it. I've got, uh, in my first food processor book, I had a bunch of uh, cookies, 14 of them. If you start with number one and went to number 14, in that order, you could make all the cookies. You did not have to wash the bowl. Bakeries do not wash their mixing bowl until the very end of the day. They start with the white cake, the lemon cake, the yellow cake, and spice cake, chocolate cake, and chocolate brownies. So see the order I did? And you just scrape it out. Here's our Parmesan cheese. We add that in. We just blend that, fold it in, just like that. And there is our dressing. It's not that hard. And if you have all those things, use up and there, and it's got some chunks in it. Now you can definitely put some blue cheese into this instead of that Parmesan. And uh, there's one jar. This does make a lot. It, it takes one whole jar of regular mayonnaise, but you'll get two of these. And so there we've got that. I'll put that off to the side. And clean, clean, clean. We used to have signs in the bakery, the culinary school I went to, it said clean as you go. So sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't, really depends. All right, next. We have, I'm gonna push this off to the side because I'll use it in my third recipe today. Our next one is just a vinaigrette. I teach this exactly what I'm doing right now to third graders. I go into this public schools. Normally I do uh, San Diego and Torrance Unified School Districts. And I teach the kids how they have gardens growing. And if they see their food grown, they are more apt to eat it or see it at the grocery store. And I have a bottle of this dressing. And nothing against Paul Newman, it's just any prepared dressing. It's about $5 a bottle. And I'll show them that. And I'll have one child read the ingredients. And when they get to citrus acid, this one kid said, that's lemons. Now that's a smart little kid. Then you've got hydronized soybean powder. I said, where do you buy that? 
Well, all these strange ingredients that you can't pronounce is in here because most people have this bottle in their refrigerator for over three months. The average is six months, but three months I'm gonna give you. I would rather have fresh dressing every week. And so all my recipes only have enough the other ones, not that creamy one we just did, but the rest of them for one night, maybe two. Dressings also go with different salads. This will be, a vinaigrette is really nice with a soft leaf salad, not a romaine or a, um, an iceberg uh, lettuce. So those are more for creamy. So here we go. We are going to do apple cider vinaigrette. Now here, again, we go back to um, Temecula olive. We have fresh pomegranate, uh, the balsamic. You can use any kind of balsamic you want. I've got some from Italy, but I thought I'd do the uh, pomegranate tonight. And then we also have a um, the apple cider vinegar that we used in the other one. And we've got liquid honey. Now, I've got special honey. This is so special, it only happened last year. It's called Local California Super Bloom Honey. You can use any kind you want. Super Bloom happened five minutes from here, from our house. Last year, at this time, all the fields were packed with colorful flowers. So if you go Super Bloom Riverside County on Google, CNN did a whole story about it. My friends out in Europe emailed and said, is that by your house? We had over 60,000 people per day in a five mile radius driving through, stopping on our highway. It took me forever to get down to San Diego to go to the station. but. They made honey out of that stuff, and it's crazy. If you would have seen what it looked like and tasted this honey, it's exactly what you think it should be. It's a bunch of different poppies and flowers. We have some sea salt. Then we have canola oil or peanut oil. I'd rather do canola because I really want that pomegranate to come out, and we put that in a pourable container. We're just gonna take our balsamic and our apple vinegar and just a little bit of honey, about a tablespoon. Now this will make enough for one family salad dressing. So I hide that honey. Then we've got our salt and we're gonna blend that together to get that honey all blended up in there. And then, now that honey will help emulsify this when I add the oil. So here's our, We'll just steady stream. And this will be great on uh, baby greens. And it's done. There's your salad dressing. So I show the kids and you'll see how thick it got because of that honey emulsifying. See that? Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna put this in a nice bottle. And uh, that's the other thing. When I was working on my book, I had all these bottles of dressing because I wanted to see how long they'd last. They last about two weeks in the fridge. But like with this, this is good for about a week to two weeks and about three salads, large, small salads. And there you go. Isn't it nice looking, the color? And now if you want, you can add herbs into this. This is a very basic vinaigrette. And we're using the flavors of our balsamic, that pomegranate. You can take some pomegranate seeds and chop them up and put them into here. So it doesn't look nicer than the, the brown bottle dressing. So there's our second dressing. And I'll make sure I'll put those online where you get all that stuff. Except that Super Bloom honey, can't get it now. This is all I have left, so. Honey is about the only staple that doesn't go bad. And if it starts getting uh, sugary looking, just put it in the microwave for a little bit. We're going back with our food processor that's dirty. And we are going to make pesto cold slaw, kind of a mock pesto cold slaw. I was looking at all my ingredients and I did not have any uh, toasted or any pine nuts at all. I thought I had some. So I'm going to use cashews. You can use pecans, change the nut up, doesn't matter. You're making this, nobody cares. If they care about what you're making, find new people to feed. But I think you're stuck with all of them this week in your house, so you're kind of... But what I am so fortunate is Neil eats anything I make. I, I can't think of one thing over the 
32 years that he's gone up, not so much. There's some things he likes a little better, but he is like the best eater ever of what I cook. All right, now what we do, this is a very cheap salad to make. Cabbage is very inexpensive. I should use the word inexpensive instead of cheap, but we have white cabbage. We have um, red, we have some onions, and we have some parsley, all chopped up, put into a large bowl. Then what we have is our, let me get that spatula back. Let me rinse it off. We're going to have our mayonnaise and basil or basil. Uh, what I want with the basil is I want you to use fresh and take all the leaves, wash them, and take only the leaves, the soft leaves. I don't want you to use uh, any of the stems. So we'll put that in. And we're gonna pulse this just to make a pesto mayonnaise. It's like the fastest pesto mayonnaise you ever heard of. It doesn't have all the oil because the mayonnaise already that has it. If you already have a, a jar of pesto you've made or you have it in the fridge, take about three tablespoons and throw it into uh, the mayonnaise and you'll, that'll work too. So then we're gonna scrape the sides down and I will add the nuts in. And I used unsalted nuts because they'll be too salty. If I only have salted, I won't salt and pepper, I won't salt my dish. And when you use pulse, it jumps it up and it chops it. If I just turn it on, it spins. So, so it's crazy. When I teach these kids the salad dressings, they nine and then I have them taste it. And then I explain how if they worked at McDonald's, they have to work X amount of minutes to buy the bottle dressing or X amount of minutes to make the other. And normally they only have to work four minutes at McDonald's for the dressing I make or the bottle, they have to work an hour plus. They normally decide to make their own. Then I have them taste it. And again, they like the homemade better. A lot of people never make homemade dressings. But here is our pesto mayonnaise. Let me put that there. Ooh. And what we're going to do is get a larger bowl to toss this in. I'm back. <laughs> if I tried to toss it in this, it would go everywhere. Toss it. Now, when you have all this dressing, you're going to take a little bit here, toss it around, clean the sides, just like that, and toss that up. Now, uh, you can also add some carrots for color. You can do some tomatoes in this, but the coleslaw normally just has cabbage, onions, a little bit of carrot. And look, all of that, I like my dressing to be all tossed in there. I don't like a pool of dressing. Pour this in. Let me get a plate and plate this up so you can see what it looks like. And stay right there. <laughs> and I normally have the plate ready to go. But I didn't. We need a musical interlude. Oh, we need some music, yeah. Oh, well. And there is our... Now with this, what I would also do is take and salt and pepper on top. And might even take a little bit of a um, fresh basil on top. Again, salt that way. Don't want a whole lot. And get a little basil leaf. Clean basil leaf. Make it sure it's dry or it will. And just like that. And there you go. 
There's your pasta salad. Not pasta, pasta salad, it's not pasta, pesto. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm not sure what I'm making, but I just got my box of pork reyes cheese. And I know I ordered blue cheeses. Might do something with blue cheese. Port Reyes is in Northern California. When I was there two weeks ago, I was going to go up to the farm, but they closed it down uh, to visitors. Back probably 15, 20 years ago when they were opening up the, um, the cheese company, it's owned by uh, a family, and the daughters came to one of my classes on blue cheese. So they do classes up there with uh, their chef, and I'm gonna put a link to them so tomorrow you'll see exactly what I unbox. I haven't even unboxed it yet, it just came. And uh, we'll do something with blue cheese tomorrow. And maybe, uh, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, thanks so much. Put some comments and uh, share this with your friends. Hope to see you guys soon. Stay safe, wash your hands, eat. And I don't want you all to uh, be gained weight after this. Uh, I saw something that said, day one, workout pants. Day 17, sweats is what they are wearing now. So we don't want that either. So stay healthy, eat well, and talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks.